Hi guys. Um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening from wherever you're watching from any part of the world. And this is Mr. Value and I'm recording this from Dublin, Ireland. And um, so yeah, this video is going to be just about those who want to do a master's in Ireland and who are thinking of coming to Ireland from Nigeria to do a master's maybe in Dublin or in Limerick or in Cork, I mean wherever, but just so you know that my advice or whatever tip I'm going to be giving in this video is going to come from my experience doing a master's in Dublin, okay? Um, and yeah, this, this is going to be in different parts and so first I'm going to walk you through how to you know, the pre-admission phase, the pre-visa phase, and the pre-arrival phase. And then, in the next video, you're going to have to see what then you get into when you come into Dublin, you know, what should you, what you should do first, and all that. And, and so you might ask yourself, why am I doing this? So I, um, I thought about what, if you go through my previous videos, you see different aspects of, um, of, of thoughts that I get to share on my channel. This is the value channel. Um, but then most recently I started to ponder on helping people, especially in the area of studies or education. And I felt what better way than to share my own experience and hopefully it, it helps somebody. Um, so yes, so first you're, I'm to hoping that you're in Nigeria or it could be any other part of Africa, but I mean, I came from Nigeria, so I'll share my own experience. And you're trying to do a master's in Ireland or you're probably considering Ireland or Ireland is in a mix with every other, so many other countries for you and you're trying in the middle of deciding. And I've had a lot of people call me to say, you know, I'm looking at doing a master's, what should I consider? So I'm just going to share some of those things in this video. All right, um, so let's get, get into it. First, uh, the first part is getting an admission. Um, so you need to ask yourself, what skill do I have? What area of study? Uh, you might have a bachelor's degree already, or you should have a bachelor's degree already if you're trying to do a master's. So this video would not cover people who are trying to come into Ireland for a bachelor's degree. I wouldn't have an expertise in that. But if you're trying to do a master's, then you should already have a bachelor's degree. So um, one thing to consider is what area of study was my bachelor's degree? Um, and how relevant is that area of study to the Republic of Ireland? So if you go online, you can see different areas of profession and how they relate to, to work or to the, the economy of Ireland. Um, so let's say if you're someone who did accounting in Nigeria for your first degree, you want to consider, am I coming in to do a master's in accounting or am I considering something like fintech, you know, the different other parts. Um, for me, my first degree was in electrical engineering in Nigeria. Um, but then um, as an electrical engineer, I was already looking at, you know, ma majoring in IT. So one major decision for me coming into Ireland was, do I come in for a master's in electrical engineering or do I come in for a master's in IT? Um, and so that's where I said, you need to research, find out what is relevant. And so I, find, I found out that um, IT as a standalone was very relevant in Ireland. And so I decided to stick with it. You know, so I came in for a master's in information systems with computing. It could be different for you. Um, so like I said, you, you need to do a research on that to find out, you know, the cost of study you want to and how it relates to the economy of the country you're coming into, in this case, the Republic of Ireland. Uh, and so just for, for some people who might be wondering, um, I've heard about Northern Ireland and I've heard of Ireland, I've heard of Dublin, what's the difference? So there is an Ireland, I-S-L-A-N-D of Ireland. So the whole of Ireland, the Republic and Northern Ireland is an island, I-S-L-A-N-D, which means it is surrounded by water. But, so, I mean, they're literally brothers. It's the same people. Um, but, and there might be people who might dispute me on this, so that's a different topic. But um, 
the Republic of Ireland is a, a, nation, a country of its own, whereas Northern Ireland is part of the United Kingdom. Um, but then they're all one island, I-S-L-A-N-D. Um, so that, that's how it is. I'm in the Republic of Ireland and that's where you have Dublin. So Dublin is the capital here. Whereas in Northern Ireland, you have Belfast. So, you know, don't be confused when you hear any of these. So uh, what I'm talking about is the Republic of Ireland as a country of its own and Dublin as a city within the Republic of Ireland. So, um, yeah, so you need to find out. Um, so for me, it was, like I said, I had to come in for a master's in information systems with computing, which is basically IT, um, and which is what I already was majoring in uh, with a bachelor's in electrical engineering. So you need to find out for your own course of study what is relevant and how it relates to the Republic of Ireland. Okay, so when you find this, so find out and then find the schools. So there is the Trinity College, there is the U um, University College of Dublin, so UCD, there's TCD, there is um, DCU, um, there is uh, University of Limerick, there's, there's a UCC in Cork. There are many universities across Ireland, um, but the ones that are in Dublin are TCD, um, UCD, DCU, um, Dublin City University, that's the name, sorry. Um, DBS, which is where I studied, shout out to all DBS guys, uh, Dublin Business School. Um, so the, the, there's Griffith College as well in Dublin. So if you're looking at coming to Dublin, these are the schools you need to look at. Maynooth University is also close to Dublin, so you can consider it in Dublin. Um, you know, so, but it, it's, it's, it's in the county of its own Maynooth, but this, the other ones I called are in the heart of Dublin. So if you're coming into any of these schools, you need to check in the, uh, the international students section, find out the courses for postgraduate studies, and then find out if your course is there. It could be named differently in each of these schools. So like I said, in, in Dublin Business School, it was named um, Masters in Information Systems with Computing. Okay, uh, so yes, that's that's something. And if, if depending on if I depending on what I have in the comment section, I'll find out if you want me to do a video specifically on choosing a course of study, I can do that. But that's not what we're talking about today. So well, when you find out your course, apply to the university. Some of them might link you up to the agents who are in Nigeria. So some of them operate through an agent. So for me, Dublin Business School operated through an agent called UKES in, in, in Lagos, Nigeria. Um, so, I mean, they're not bound by location. They can work with you anywhere in Nigeria, but that's their agent in Nigeria and their, their head office is in Lagos, UK, yes. And I think they work with many other countries like Canada, UK. So but for DBS, you know, this, this agent was the consultant in Nigeria. And they would walk you through the application, the visa application process, putting together your documents and so your proof of funds, your your um, education history, your letter, statement of purpose or application letter as it, as it may be, um, birth certificates, all those things that prove that you have ties with Nigeria and that you have family in Nigeria. And please try to make your documents legitimate. It's very important. A lot of people apply with, with so good qualifications, very good prospects, but then there's a lot of discrepancy. And if there's any place you have a discrepancy, I advise you go to the court and get an affidavit. Even if it's a very clear discrepancy, let's say there's a mistake in your name, go get an affidavit to back that up. Don't leave anything to chances, okay? Just, you know, if you find anything that might just give any form of doubt, why am I saying this? Because you're going to be applying to the embassy, but there is no interview, so you you do not have a chance to defend yourself, to say anything. You're just sending in your documents. So you want to prove beyond every reasonable doubt that you know what you have is legitimate and that you have you know straight you know, your your documents are straight and clear and all that you know and that that way your application is neat your application is straightforward there's no form of doubt and yeah so but then uh, some people might ask okay so what kind what kind of fees am i looking at if i'm coming to 
study in the Republic of Ireland. So I think you'd be looking at something between 10,000 euros to 13,000 euros. And this changes, the, the, these fees change every year. At the time when I was coming, it was about 11,000 um, 11, euros. Um, and so it can be different for different um, universities. And I think they, they make a review every year, so it can change. Um, but then before your visa, you need to pay at least 60% of the fee. You don't have to pay it all before your visa application. It could be 60%. So if you pay 60%, you're free to apply for a visa. And that's a lot of people might always want to wait for have, paying the whole fee before they apply for a visa. Um, so you can apply with 60% and you need to you know complete the fees before you then travel. So you can be given a visa after paying 60% of the fees, but you need to pay it in full before you travel. Okay, so yeah, so that's it. You can pay 60% and apply for a visa. There's an embassy in, in, in Abuja, there is in Lagos, I think, and you apply through the VFS, VFS Global. Um, they are like the visa agents. You go there, you know, package your documents, put it in a file. You do a lot of printing, a lot of printing. So you know, it's it's if you have a computer, arrange your documents neatly before you print and then do photocopies. But, you know, always have good records for everything that you're sending in. And please try to send in, in the best way possible, try to send in photocopies. There are some particular documents for which they might ask for original, uh, but it, where you have not been asked for an original, just send in a photocopy. But I think even if you send any original, I think they send it back to you with the with the visa. But, you know, limit the amount of originals you send in. It's very important that you don't put your documents at any risk, you know. Um, so, yeah, once you make the visa application, the rest is to wait. Um, but while you wait, you can begin to prepare yourself, especially if you follow the guide of the agents that have helped you you know, and your documents are straightforward, you, you, you have work experience. I always advise that if you're coming in to do a master's, please take some time to work in that area so that you have a very clear understanding of what is required in the field. It would help you as well in working um, in Ireland if you want to work in Ireland, um, whether it's part-time or full-time, you know, after your studies or even while you're studying. You can work part-time while you study in Ireland. You're allowed 20 hours a week um, for, for part-time jobs. And, you know, there are lots of part-time jobs available in Ireland. At the time of recording this, a lot of things might be different from when I studied. This is, we're just coming out of a pandemic in Ireland at the moment, recovering from the COVID impact. So there's been a lot of effect on jobs. So my advice to people who are coming in, especially during the COVID era, is please have your upkeep money Please have enough funds to to help you, even if you're not going to work for at least the whole time. It's best if you have the whole money for the whole time or at least six months. You know, please don't put yourself at any form of risk. If you're coming in to study here, have you, you should actually show proof of funds for about 7,000 euros minimum, you know. And so it's best if you can have that. Because I think in coming in, there's going to be a lot of impact to your funds, especially with regards to COVID. Um, so a lot of times you might also be, be, begin to think about what do I carry? What do I, you know, it's a lot to travel, especially when you're going into a new country. And I found Naira Land a very helpful resource in doing this. There you'd see a lot of people share their experience with parking, with airports, you know, what to do at the airport, what not to do, what to carry, what not to carry. There's a, that's a, a, a lot to talk about, you know. And please, if you have ideas, I'd, I'd welcome them in the comment sections about what to park, what to not park, airport experiences. But if you find, if you're, if you're doubtful about taking anything, whether it's food items, please, you know, take it out. If, you, if anything is going to affect your confidence, please take it out, you know. Um, the idea of this video is to help you transition successfully from a work or from a from a bachelor's degree in Nigeria to doing a master's in Ireland. But please remember, it is important that you have at least one year of experience in your area of interest. You know, it would help you a lot. Work for at least one year in Nigeria, gain experience before going to do a master's. It will help you even know what you want from a master's. You know, I already knew 
do what kind of dissertation I wanted to work on because of my work experience in Nigeria and that's that was very helpful you know because a lot of people can be lost you know even in doing the masters in Ireland and one last thing before you arrive or you know and, and I think you're going to do this in the visa application you need to book a hotel accommodation or a hostel accommodation you know a proof of where you're going to be staying for at least a temporary time when you come into Ireland it's part of what you submit for the visa application so you can go on to booking.com uh, on booking.com you can book a hostel without even having to pay full you know for the visa application but what helps what how this helps is that by the time you come into Ireland even if you don't have an immediate accommodation you can go onto a hostel and then pay you know for the for the booking that you have already made and get to stay there for please book for a minimum of two weeks it's very important with minimum of two weeks you can extend it but a minimum of two weeks this way you can have more time to get yourself in, in shape and probably find the house but i'll do that in the next video i'll talk about you know the next steps when you arrive and what to do once you come into the Republic of Ireland. So let me know in the comment section if this video has been helpful. If, you've, if you have any ideas, experiences, please you're welcome to share. You know, Nigerians in Ireland, if you have something different or something helpful that might be of help to people watching this, please share in the comment section. And I look forward to hearing your success stories. Take care.